Man, I can already feel the heat pumping out of the vent. Oh, that's good. Liquid. Oh, liquid. Um, heated oxygen coming to my face. Yes, good sir. Good sir. Um, Tolstoy Kafkavsky here. Uh, on day three of my three-day weekend. And it's been an interesting weekend. Oh, sort of. Hmm. We've been without electricity for the past, like, 17 hours because of the storm, the tornado that came through the area, and um, we were driving around in the rain and the wind before that to get to uh, a fairgrounds in Maryland that they were having a gun show at. Now, gun shows, for me, are like Christmas. Actually, me and my brother call it Knifemas. Merry Knifemas. Um, and I just, uh, I get giddy whenever I, I go there. But so, I mean, I went to a gun show, and that's obviously what this video is about, but uh, if I seem a little weird or, you know, if I seem a little burnt out, like my lips look pink because uh, last night, pitch black, insomniac, don't go to sleep, you know, night owl, can't tell a night owl there's no, you know, no more lights. It's like telling Charlie Sheen that there's no more coke, you know what I mean? Um, so I just lit, oh, fuck ton of candles and like listen to music and stuff and then I decided to watch Spider-Man 3 on UMD cause PSP yeah and uh, I thought hey you know what would make this experience better? Alcohol. Hey what do we have to mix it with? Uh, you know strawberry rum, strawberry kool-aid, rock and roll oh man. I'm not, I'm not hungover I've actually never been really truly sick from alcohol cause I, I normally know how to gauge my body and stuff like that, but without friends there to, to drink with and to talk to, and every six seconds put down your drink to say something to, I, I slammed it a little hard, and uh, I've just been having a weird, you know, kind of morning. I mean, I'm all right. I feel all right. I just feel weak. Maybe because I haven't eaten anything, really. That's another thing. I was feeling weak at the gun show, but that that, that was just because I was doing, having too many knife-gasms. You have knife-gasms at gun shows. Let me tell you about that. At least I do. Anyway, I wanted to talk to you about all the implements of destruction that I brought back, and I guess I'm going to slap up a disclaimer here. Um, I know a lot about weapons laws. A lot. Because it's important to me. I don't know the weapons laws in your area. I know that, like, in Pennsylvania, butterfly knives are legal. Nah, to carry. In Maryland, eh, not so much. I've heard some people try to say that they are because there's a statute that says, um, pen knife without switchblade also includes any, you know, can include... Let's see, what's, what's the exact language? Sometimes it was, a, it was added later as a uh, precedent set by the court. The court ruling showed that sometimes... Pen, pen knife without switchblade folds into the handle, and sometimes the blades are quite large. And um, they, from that, said, well, as long as a butterfly knife folds into a handle, isn't that, you know... And, um, but I don't know. Uh, a lot of stuff, most of the time you won't get in trouble for, like, possessing it in your home, and that's what I do. I, I collect weapons and I possess them in my home. A lot of these will be illegal to carry in the street. Also, you have to take into consideration intent. You can carry mace. You know what I mean? And if someone backs you in a corner and you mace them, it's particularly, it's it's considered, you know, it's not a huge deal. But it is, in fact, a weapon. It's just that, you know, you will be judged, you will be, you know, uh, punished for it if you're using it in an offensive manner. As in, if I, like, walked up to, like, a clerk and then maced them in the face and then took the register. That would be an offensive manner as opposed to a defensive manner. Now, you can say the same thing about all weapons, but not really. I mean, so, again, yeah, like, if a, if a cop pulled me over and found a fixed blade in my pocket, that's just jail no matter what, you know, but if he finds mace, and I say, officer, I haven't used it yet, it's just in case someone was trying to, like, break into my car, that's legal. Anyway, but uh, a lot of this stuff is legal, having your home, I guess, just can't carry it with you. Uh, I mean, I had an interesting conversation with a guy I tried to get, he was selling, he had all these, um, switchblades, and they were good. I mean, like, I, there was a guy there who had a switchblade, and, like, I wouldn't, I don't like to talk about that, because it's like, excuse me, it's, um, not underground or anything, but it's like, it's, you go to a gun show and they have some stuff that's off the table. Mm -hmm. And some guy was selling. He's like, it's a, it's made in Italy switchblade. I'm like, no, it's not. This, this is, this is shit. The action was so bad. I felt so terrible because I'm like, dude, I have assisted openers that are six times better than this. And I know it was a spring, but I'm like, it's a shitty spring. Found this guy who was selling good stuff, and he was all like, oh, this is the titanium milled out, you know, first response handle. That yeah, you like that? It was out the front, and um, you know, and I just after all his you know spiel, I was like, well, how much? He's like, though, though, that would be you know, a hundred. And twenty dollars. I was like, I'll take it. You know, and he's like, all right. Now, are you military? Which man was like, no, no. And um, so yeah, he was actually. He's like, I sell to a lot of police. And I'm like, what are they gonna use it for? When's the last time a cop had to stab somebody? They should be tasing and calling for backup. 
So anyway, the first thing that I want to show you that I got, which I think is kind of cool, I'm probably get a lot of comments. I'm actually thinking about walking out the house like this. You may have noticed it already. I totally have an ass bag. Yeah, you like that ass bag? Woo! Look at that. Look at that. I'm just so happy right now because our electricity is back on. Look what I can do. Woo! I'm a wizard. So, um, yeah, I got this ass bag. It totally looked Metal Gear awesome. I, I kind of like saw it. I just, I, I thought about, you know, soldiers hunk, hunker down. Dun, 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 dun. I just kind of saw that. I mean, it kind of goes with my weird camo pants. I don't know how the suit vest works into that. But it's not uncomfortable to sit on. And if I really had to stick something in my bag, I mean, you know, it's probably, it's a pickpocketer's dream, but, you know. You get your ass bag. I just think it looks cool. I definitely have a project I'm gonna mix that with. I definitely have um, something I'm gonna I'm going to uh, do with that. But I gotta find the other implements. It may involve what I wear to Otakon if I go to Otakon. In fact, I have decided I'm gonna go to Otakon. Giggity giggy, giggity goo. All right. Anyway, so the next thing you can probably see right underneath the keys, we have a new addition over here. Remember, kids. Always, you know, ask your parents, be responsible, don't be dumb. You know, check the weapons laws in your state. I think I'm complying with all laws. I have no intent to hurt anybody. Unless they intend to hurt me. And in which case, I'm not going to use a pair of nunchucks, man. But, um... Be careful, kids. Don't be fucking stupid. Don't copy what Tolstoy does. Do as I say, not as I do. What a weird thing your parents used to say, you know? Um, got me some nunchaku. Um, these seem to pretty good quality. They're not the best. I really wouldn't, you know, fling these around, but I have felt much cheaper at different, you know, areas. Uh, I know a little bit of nunchaku. I used to have practice nunchucks. Um, it's not a very effective weapon, if you ask me. I mean, and here we go, all the weird, like, you know, uh, there's a slur for weeaboos, dude. All the weeaboos to go, oh my god, it's the ancient tradition of, dude, I, no, dude, gun, gun, get a gun, handgun, gun. I've never, I have never been afraid of a guy with nunchucks, you know. But they are cool, though. They are really cool looking. Um, and yeah, they could do some damage, but I'd say the chances that you're going to hurt yourself in the ship coming, because whenever you smack down, if you do it hard enough, and I'm not trying to because I'm in close proximity, it will bounce back. And then there's a way to absorb it. You have to you know, kind of flick it again. I know a few of the catches, and I thought they were cool. I would, like, sit and listen to music and practice the catches. Then you'd bring that all the way around over here and catch it. My room is in really, you know, I don't want to really, this isn't the best place to practice. But, there you go, you catch it. And, see, if you mess up, it's really going to hurt. And I was practicing with rubber ones, and it still fucking hurt when you missed. Um, so, yeah, I think those are really cool wall decoration. Hmm. Um, all the stuff that I've got is now up on my, it's either in my, uh, you know, guitar case, or my death dealing box, or up here on my wall, so I don't know. What there is to talk about next? Well, all right, let's start with some little stuff. Um, kind of have to remove the Shikoto sword if I'm going to do this. Um, got a couple of cheapy stainless steel throwing knives that I've that I really feel like I should try out. They have a lot of weight in the front. I tried throwing knives a while ago, um, and my and I'll, I'll show you the ones that I was working with. Um, I had six of these originally, and then they all just got lost and left behind. Um, like the way these things look, little shurukens, shurukens, but um, these aren't weighted very well. They're balanced, but they, these have the weight in the front so that they want to tumble. A lot of misconceptions about throwing knives, which is one... You know, in the movies, you see it, and the, the hero goes, Bleh! and, like, throws it, and it goes, Wah! and spins like a fucking fan, dude. The more it spins, the more, you know, you're giving it a chance to rotate off course. What you're really trying to do is kind of arc it into the target. You're trying to get it to go, eh, boop, quarter turn, boop, you know. At most, a half turn, so starting in this position, or maybe that, and going, all the way to its, you know. Um, but I found it was kind of hit and miss. I mean, like, I kept... You know, throwing, and I, I never did like the throwing like this, you know, I always threw like this and I would try to, problem is I was doing a lot of putting a backspin on it by putting my finger up there, so eventually I just started keeping up with the tip and 
And the first time I put these in my hands, I just said, don't think, throw. And I threw the board, went right in. I said, shit, yeah. And then I went, you know, don't think, throw. Went right in. I was like, yeah. And then I got to the third one. I said, don't think, throw. And it went, ka-clang. Ting. And then after that, it was just hit and miss, 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 hit, hit, miss, miss, hit, miss. And I could only even, like, hit the board the 50% of the time. Um, and I just started thinking about it, and I was like, dude, you know what this is what I should do? I should get, like, four of these and glue them together in a circle. It would be like a star, and I would throw it. Oh, uh, yeah. Like, it made more sense. Like, why am I not throwing, like, a chalk ram or a disc? Why would I have even 50% chance that it would land handle in, not blade in, you know? Um, but whatever, I bought a couple of these because I thought they were kind of cool and badass looking. Uh, I thought maybe it might be time to try to get back in the game because I heard somebody... Uh, give me some advice, Sam. Well, what kind of knives were you throwing with? If they were shit, then you're not going to be able to, you know, do. A, you're not going to be able to make the target a lot. So these were weighted, and they just looked cool. I don't really give a shit um, if they don't throw well. I'd, I'd like to experiment because I was doing a little throwing knives the other day uh, up against a cardboard box, and um, yes. So let's put those away. And the next thing um, we get to talk about here is my fancy new bottle opener. Bottle cap opener. And you can really open some bottles with these. You could open up a Heineken bottle. You could open up, you know, a Dos Equis, a Tsingdao. Yeah, definitely. I definitely think that's what you'd be able to use this for. And I wouldn't carry it out of my house because whenever you go to a bar, they already have bottle openers there. Okay, so it's a bottle opener, or a paperweight, it's whatever. Okay. Alright, so, um, let's see, what else? Lots to talk about, lots to talk about. Now, this one was a work of art, this one was. And that's why I keep it over here next to the stately corner, the stately corner. So, there's a guy who was making his own folded Damascus steel. Wow, guy was really interesting. Big old shaved head, big old bushy beard, big old strong tattoo. But he was a really educated guy in the ways of knife making. And he did a little bit of leather work, and he was talking to me for a while. He's like, "Well, this one's got ram's horn." He was doing the weirdest patterns. I swear to God, he had like it was almost like Native American blades or something like that. He had like ram's horn with like mother of pearl, a little bit of brass in the handle. And I was like, "Damn, son!" They were like deco knives. I should have gotten them, but to be honest, I mean, like it was you know gun show. You lap, you know, you I'll come back and see you, sir. Uh, if it's still there and I still have the money, is what I kept telling him. You know, um, he took a real, as he said, you can't use uh, modern railroad spikes, they don't work. He took a real, mo uh, you know, antique railroad spike from the 1800s and crafted a fixed blade. Dude, that's so metal. I mean, not just that it's metal, it's metal. Um, so, yeah, it has some markings here on the bottom where they, they hammered it. I don't, oh, no, wait, it says S. Mm. Tink, tink, tink. Um, this would be so metal to like stab any of your enemies. And tink, 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 tink. No, don't really do that. Um, so yeah, the blade isn't very sharp like at all. Um, and it doesn't have to be. I mean, like I tried cutting a little paper with it. It really doesn't have to be. It's just a cool, cool, you know, collector's piece. Oh, I really like this guy's work. Oh fuck, he had a card. I probably should have plugged him. I took it out of my pocket to be honest. Um, yeah. So there's that. What else? Coming down to the last thing. Uh, I don't know. I'm trying to... This is also illegal to take out of your home, but I don't believe it's illegal to own in your home. And, uh, again, with the utmost respect do I treat this, I was actually afraid of this when I saw it. Um, in movies, you'll see some sort of taser, and, like, they go... Tick, 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 tick. When you see a real taser and hear a real taser, there is a, such a psychological deterrent. I swear to God, in the first gun show that I went to and I saw one of those, I backed into a table, seeing the light. I was like, shit, and I backed into another table. This one, I knew that there was a taser going to be there. And when the guy went to click the button, I went, I went, whoa, like that. And I, you know, jumped back like 10 feet. It is just such a deterrent force. This one, I don't know how cheapy shitty it is. It was like $44. I don't know why. But uh, it's got a little safety there. I wouldn't even think about carrying it. I just, you know, I mean, I would never carry it.
you can smell burnt ozone when you press down the button. Damn. Needs a charge. That it though, it's an LED. So anyway, um, yeah, that's and it charges by wall socket, which I thought was handy. I really would like a military grade one with like a good handle and shit like that, but those probably aren't for sale. There's probably some you know law limitation of you know how many volts that can do a million volts. I'm not an electrician. I just know. Sparky, old Sparky Tazy Boy right there, would definitely come in handy were there any kind of wigger. Yes, sir. Which I saw a wigger there at the gun show, and I'm sorry, I have to, I just have to spew hate. Hang on, give me a sec. I need a prop. Let's go with the Ruger. Dear Wigger at the gun show, when Insane Clown Posse had worn on sideways and your goatee beard and your baggy pants and being the brain, what the fuck would you do with a gun? What are you doing with all of these people collecting tools that they would use for sport and defense? What would you do? Hold it sideways, try to grab your cock with your baggy pants and shit, shoot like that until all the shells tumbled into your face and burnt your skull? Sorry, just, I had to have a little bit of hate. You gotta, you gotta allow me a little bit of hate, man. In the condition that I'm in, come on, feel sorry for me. Um, Okay, so what else? Uh, I've been through most of the stuff that, uh, this is actually not illegal to carry. This next piece. I didn't fuck with you, man. I don't know. There's no laws in the books. I mean, the cops probably shoot you, but the cops don't know the laws. That is the terrible thing. And you, you, all cops cannot be trained to be lawyers. The cop, I mean, law, life today is so complex that the laws on the books, you know, were written, well, really to please the bourgeoisie. The laws aren't really written like laws, like thou shalt not kill. They're like, thou shalt not kill, unless you're wearing an Armani tux, then it's okay. And I'm like, what? Um, yeah, you know. So the laws are complex and written weird to uh, take into consideration, I think, way too many factors, including the meddling of the bourgeoisie uh, in our society. And, um... The cops can't know them all, so you'll get these cops who will tell you, I have never had an honest talk with a cop, I swear to God. In bars, whenever you, you talk to a police officer, you say, hey, listen, let me ask you a question. Is, is it legal to, um, to, you know, carry a, uh, jack and they go, not if it's over two inches in length. I'm like, okay, well, actually, there's no, there's no, you know, stature saying that you can't, you know, there's no length limit. It, it, it's how it deploys. Size doesn't matter. It's, you know, is it a switchblade or spring-loaded or is it a ballistic knife, you know? And that's, you can't really talk to them, like, because they don't, you know, and then I, you have all these cops who will, they really want to, the, the population to be disarmed. That is what I dislike, you know what I mean? It's like, um, this was terrible, but I forgot who, what brought it up. It's almost like, well, why would you want to get something about a gun show? And my response was like, well, it's like, God's salvation. The guns came for everyone, you know, I said, oh, we're arming up all the citizens, you know what I mean? It's just, it's a, you're doing a good job when everyone's armed to the teeth. But, um... Was I about? Oh yeah, they, they really don't want you to be armed. Uh, I, I I mean, like, I've talked to uh, quite a few cops and all their responses, it's illegal, don't do it, me. And it's like, it's a perfect fucking lie. No, it's not. Like, is mace illegal? Oh, it's illegal. You don't want to carry mace. You know what you should carry? Nothing. A cell phone call, the police. I was like, oh, you're going to be there in 30 seconds if I'm going to get, like, you know, raped and killed in a back alley? No. No. You know, I mean, and I understand, I am not one of these people who are like, I just shoot him. You know, I, obviously, you know, your first response isn't, I just shoot him, or, or something. I've heard some really clever tricks that would really come in handy without, you know, even having to resort to weaponry. First of all, you know, if you're going to go on long walks or you live alone, if you're a young lady going to college, get a big-ass dog and make sure puppy likes you. It's not difficult. Watch your dog whisper, read Caesar Milan's books, and then you got a big-ass dog that really likes you that will die for you, quite literally. Puppy don't care. If something comes to the front door and it ain't his, <clears throat> that dog will, you know, depending on the breed. And I mean, you know, like I've gone to, like, you know, <clears throat> square off with my brother or, like, my father, and Benny wants to kill me. I don't know why Benny immediately assumes it's my fault. Maybe he's an asshole. But Pretzel. Pretzel always tried to break up the fight. He was intelligent in that way. And I mean, a lot of people go, oh, he's in boots, he's so smart. But I mean, I know that the dog knew that something was going on and didn't want either party to get hurt, and he'd look at us and go, ah, 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 and would like run in between us and stuff like that. I, you know, I can only imagine the dog had some semblance of intelligence enough to know what's going on there. God damn, my stomach hurts. Um, so I was talking about, oh right, the cops really want you to be disarmed. And, um, but I, they, they'd shoot you if they saw you had this, but I mean, it is legal. I've wanted one of these for a while, actually. 
I don't know the grade that this is, or how good this is, or how old this is, but it seems in fairly good condition. Damn, see, I shouldn't be, like, plucking it like random stuffing. It is what I believe is a black snake whip. Now, I know what you're saying. Tolstoy, it's brown. I know, it's, awesome. it's an awesome color. Leather deserves to be burgundy, son. It has to be brown. Um, I believe a bull whip has to be very long. Has to be, I mean, particularly long. This is short. I've heard... And they make about three feet. And that's about three feet? Yep, three feet snake whips. When they outlawed slapjacks, which if you don't know what a slapjack is, or a blackjack, oh, just a terrible weapon. They used to give the cops those. Um, and that's just a bad idea. Uh, they would put weighted leather, you know, uh, they would put leather bags, in leather bags, weight, you know, lead weights. So you'd have, like, a lead weight, and you could, you know, crack somebody in the skull, and it would just bust their head open. they just go down, you know. Um, and I think after they outlawed that in... Like 19, you know, it was, it was during Prohibition, I believe, because the, the gangsters loved them. Um, slapjacks. Uh, they, uh, some company or somewhere, you know, started producing black snake whips for, and I think they they really only caught on some of the, you know, the areas in more rural towns in different came New York or Chicago, but black snake whips, you know, in uh, in uh, you know some backwoods area where you could carry one of these into town. And it wasn't like a firearm, because modern firearms may have been outlawed. That I, I don't know, I just know, I read a little bit about them, you can find it on Wikipedia. Um, little smaller whips that could quickly, you know, unlike in Indiana Jones, a big bullwhip would telegraph your attacks. You really can't get the leather moving without, dun, 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 you know. And by that time, someone's moved out of the way. This is very quickly thrown out. Now, I obviously can't really show you, like, unfurling, you know. Really, uh, I did one test swing and I smacked my ear. <laughs> Not even kidding. I threw it and I kind of went back for the, you know, for the for the swing. And on its way forward, this lovely traveling piece of rope whipped my ear. Now it didn't bleed because so I wasn't doing it very hard, and it wouldn't uh, didn't feel too bad. I mean, I didn't, I didn't, I just went oh, and did like a jackass laugh, you know, that oh, I know I fucked up here laugh, um, and all. But yeah, it wasn't didn't feel too bad. Let's just put my bull whip back up there. All right, last thing on the list to talk about, uh, and this was an interesting one. Stacked there on my wall. A large fixed blade machete. I guess it's the style of you can call it a sword. I really don't know. Pumpkin with a nice little leather satchel, leather satchel, um, leather thing. It's a thing, um, sheath. And, um, yeah, it has real wooden sides. These real wooden scales here. It is full tang. It is heavy as fuck. There's just a shit ton of metal in that bad boy. See, the good thing about these, Odell, is that these practice katanas won't break. ka -ching! Yeah, Odell! Um... Yeah, and I was doing some, you know, some practicing whoosh with that, and I cut up a few milk jugs and hacked down a few branches. Um, she's not razor sharp, but she don't have to be. Boy, howdy, when you get that metal moving. Really nice high-carbon blade, and I mean that. I mean, there's some people there who try to push off a good quality stainless spring steel. Troll face. You know, but um, this guy's like, it's high-carbon, full tang, feel how fucking heavy. I mean, it's basically just a giant fucking knife. Really, it's just a, it's just a giant boogeyman knife. Love the size, love the way it, well, the way it handles is a little slow. But what did you expect? It's a fucking axe sword, dude. High carbon blade with this weird kind of etching in there. And you can tell it's high carbon because it's got little bits of rust here and there. I mean, and the guy managed to keep it pretty clean, but this is going to be need, you know, machine oil, just like my other, my real, very real swords over there. I'm um, going to need some oil. And will eventually need to be sharpened. I might, I mean, I'd like to hone it up into something a little bit. Uh, the back is sharp, too, by the way. That's kind of a Debbie Downer for me, a little bit. It's not razor sharp, but it's sharp enough. I feel like if I made a mistake in handling it and accidentally went, uh -oh, I might be able to cut myself. Um, I see a lot of knife videos where guys are, like, grabbing the edges going, like, let me show you how this works. And they're, like, putting it on their hand. I wouldn't do that. I don't know why they're doing it. I, you know, what are they trying to show how brave they are or some shit? Oh, look, I'm touching the handle of a knife. or touching the wrong end of a knife. Mama and Papa always told me to carry the scissors down ways, you know. Um, yeah, so I really, really like this one. Man, should do some damage with it. It's not incredibly powerful, but it's pretty good. Uh, I was 75. 
But that was better than there was a World War II machete that the Germans wielded when they were heading through some sort of jungle territory. Fuck, I don't know. Um, that a guy had, he said it was too far, too far damaged, and he had to remake it and re, you know, temper it. Not retemper it, but he fixed it up, basically. Which is a no-no in the weapons community. If you, have to have to, if you ever have to fix it, you're devaluing it. But uh, he said, whatever. It still has some sort of sentimental value, and I'm, you know, happy with it. And that was 150. So for getting a 75 for this, I believe it has these, these patterns on it. They look almost like Hindi writing. And considering the people I work with, I may want to take a picture and ask them. But I don't know. I have to look up some Hindi on the internet. I mean, yeah, that's definitely some sort of language, dude. They're trying. It could be Egyptian or Persian or. That's not Egyptian. I don't know what modern day Egyptians speak. They don't speak Egyptian, do they? Hmm. Anyway. Oh. So, and the, the, the sheath is really nice. It's hard to find a good machete, I find. Most machetes, they don't put enough material in them. They don't. This has a lot of just thick. Back, I like a sturdy sword. I mean, yeah, it makes it heavy and, you know, harder to wield and a little bit. But, I mean, overall, what is this? You know, this is about, you know, eight, nine pounds. So what? The Chikoto is, what, four, five pounds? So for a nine-pound sword, you know, you're knowing it's not going to snap. And that's a very real possibility with katanas, man. That's the, that's the terrible thing is you have all these, you know... All these kids who've been raised on the anime, and they're like, Well, uh, you know, the Japanese made the best sword ever, and they had they infused them with dark spirits so that they, they won't ever break, and that they're the sharpest. And no, they won't. Katana won't cut a gun barrel in half. That's fucking insane, dude. It's got limitations. It's a sword. You're not like, like in reality, there's no such thing as sword fighting. In the sense of like, going clang, 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 clang with your sword. Now, in Europe, they had sword fighting with shields, and I believe in areas of, you know, the Middle East, they did that. But uh, in Japan, um, I don't believe there were many, you know, I don't know if there were any shields used, but the point is, you would not be smacking katanas against each other. You know what I mean? You try to get the hell out of the way of that guy's katana blow, and then deliver your own very quickly. Um, and I'm not, I'm not saying that I know a lot about swordsmanship. I understand that it's a little bit easier to wield one of these than it is to wield any kind of, you know, thin-bladed. That thing, you know, the Chikoto wants to slide through. Um, it wants to slide through its opponents, but the problem is that I don't really understand good sword form. I know you don't have to swing as hard as you, you know. All these fucking, you know, trolls on the internet don't know their shit. They're like, oh, you swing like a pussy. Like in all my older videos when I was working with really cheap swords and I was trying to see if they could cut, um, they're like, oh, you swing like a pussy. And I'm like, hey, you're fucking retarded. You know, it is, it is not about swinging, you know, uh, if you, if you over swing, in fact, at the gun show, they were showing a guy, like a video of a guy cutting with some dealer's swords or whatever, and he's like, look, look, look at this part, let's go cut through this, and he went, whoosh, he went through it so far and so hard, it went all the way through and kind of came back, and I have, you know, read from many experts, if you swing too hard, it's going to go straight through and come back at you, it'll slip out of your hands, it will hurt someone, the truth is, is you're supposed to pick point A, point B, object is in this, object is in the center of those two points, go through them. And then stop at point B. Do not keep going. It is not a baseball bat. It is not about follow through. It is a sword. Now that is, this is a baseball bat. This is just about, I've got so much fucking weight in that. You just get it up on your shoulder and then bring it down. Just like a ditch maul. Which actually is a problem. My swordsmanship is pretty much like that. Like they said it in Firefly the best. When he's, Captain Mount Reynolds is learning to practice with a sword for a duel that he accidentally got himself into. Um, Inara, who is trained in that kind of thing, says, you're swinging the sword like you're chopping wood. You know, and that's, that is kind of a problem that I face, is that most of the tools that I've used, hatchets, ditch mauls, pickaxes, you know, in, you know, light construction jobs, working on fences and digging poles and shit, and mixing up concrete. I know how to, you know, I know how to work a shovel. <laughs> so, to me, I get a sword in my hand, and I want it to be like the Chinese broadsword. I want it to be real, easy to use, just a, a point-and-click adventure. I just want to be able to swing it and kill somebody. And even if this ain't sharp enough to puncture their skin too deep, it'll still hurt like a bitch getting hit by it. Which is why, truthfully, well, I don't know. That's enough me blabber. I don't know too much about sword form. I know that the power of a katana does not come from how hard you swing. It's about how accurate you swing or something about you gotta like, you know, kind of sway your hips or you're moving you know, the way you move your hip. I've heard it from a couple different experts, but to be honest, I, I haven't practiced that much. Could I get into that kind of thing? Yeah, but I just don't have the time. Um... Jugs of water. Where the, fuck they, where the fuck do these people get all these jugs of water? Your family throws them away, dude. Um, and you really want to, you know, you're like, did you throw that that, that, that bottle away? Yeah, I was going to stab that. Why 
don't you throw it away? That backyard is filled with stuff. That you, why am I doing like a, a dialogue between me and like my dad who doesn't sound like that? These are uncomfortable. They're warm though. So um, yeah, and then we can just have a look. See, over here we have my Asian wall. There's an old cheap stainless steel katana with a splicer bunny mask and statue of this hot chick with a sword. Wish I knew some hot chick with a sword. And uh, Asian scroll, bull whip, guitar case of death sack, boys. And there's where the there's where the, the chinky sword goes. I don't even know chinky sword. Oh well, I'm racist. Whatever.